it started out my very first year, even before I started coaching. I got offered the job, and uh, in the middle of the night, I was up watching TV and I saw facing the Giants, and it was kind of like uh, just a you know gut punch that yeah, you're called to do this. So I accepted the position, and I made uh, you know a commitment with God that hey, I'm going to give you the glory after every game win or lose and just thanking him for the opportunity to be there with the kids and to be able to compete. And so I just started taking a knee on the 50 the very first game. And from there, it just kind of grew a little bit. A couple kids, I don't know, probably halfway through the year asked me, well, what are you doing out there, coach? And I said, just giving thanks for what you guys did. And there was a couple of Christians that were on the team and they said, well, hey, coach, could we pray with you? And of course I said, it's a free country. You can do whatever you want to do. So they started coming out there and uh, as time led on, more and more kids came out and then they started inviting the other team. And that's really where, um, you know, we got, got kind of the interest. One of the other educators came to a football game and they saw what we were doing. And they called the principal and said, what an awesome job the, the program is doing. And so they wanted to find out what was going on. So it really came from just a compliment and, you know, just us being out on the 50 yard line, given 30 seconds of thanks. We, we were also doing prayers before and the school said it's a captive audience, you can't do that. So we fully agreed with that. And, and it wasn't just me doing that. That was kind of everybody, all the different coaches and sometimes other people would come in and do it. Uh, this was after the game. So this is after the game is over and the two teams come and meet in the, on the 50 and they go back, our team goes off to go do our fight song, school fight song. Then after that, they just, instead of going home or going to the locker room or with their parents, they just come back out onto the field and take a knee with me and just for the thanks. When, when the legal issues started to arise, when the school district started to really come down on Coach Kennedy for what he did, uh, that's when they began to kind of change the rules on him, so to speak, or, or move the goalposts in, in terms of what he was allowed to do. And initially, it was simply, um, we don't have a problem with you doing this as long as you're not doing it with 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 the players. And we said, that's oh, that's great, you know, that's fine, you know, as long as you're respecting and honoring his constitutional right to do this. And and then they came back and said, well, actually. Uh, we don't want you doing that either. And their, and their policy, the school district's public, I mean, what they've stated publicly is that actually their rule is no employee can do anything that's visibly religious in nature. And that's what they said. If you do, if you do anything that's visibly religious, then we're going to fire you. Whether, you know, so it, it never, it became about, doesn't matter if there's people around you or not, it's whether you do anything that is visibly religious, regardless of whether other people are there or not. And so that's, that's kind of what this is boiled down to now, is can a public employee, a football coach in this case, uh, do something that people can see, and, and if it's religious in nature, can a school district actually fire you for that? I've been doing it for seven and a half years, and you know that's every game, and I was not just the, with the varsity team, but also I was a head coach for the junior varsity team, so that's two games a week for seven and a half years. And it was never, no one ever said anything. Nobody ever had a problem with it. I mean, it wasn't until they did an investigation and uh, the district's lawyer, they were the one that said, oh, well, potentially this could cause problems. So this was all about a, you know, somebody who came and said what we were doing, which was awesome, you know, a compliment to, where the lawyer said, yeah, you can't do any of this. And that's where I, I, I needed help. I don't know what the laws are. I, don't, I just figured what you know, the Constitution says. So, Coach Kennedy's legal team, we're obviously, uh, we've obviously been preparing uh, for this day for, for many weeks and months. Uh, we're grateful for the opportunity to argue on behalf of Coach Kennedy uh, in court. But uh, as far as predicting what might happen, it's impossible to predict. Uh, what a court will do in any instance. So uh, really all we can say is that we're hopeful for a favorable outcome. I miss these guys more than anything and I've been with them for four years. So as much as it hurts to be away from them and to having to be, you know, go through all of this and, you know, a huge expense to my family and, you know, the school and everybody else, that this is absolutely worth it. 
if you're not willing to stand up for what is right, then why are we even here? And if I can't be the one to set that example for them, then you know, who, who's gonna step up to, for the next fight that's out there?